Welcome to Enjoying Everyday Life with New York Times bestselling author Joyce Meyer. On today's program, Joyce will be teaching us how we can find freedom from fear. We've all experienced fear, worry, and anxiety, maybe because something negative has happened to us, or maybe because we just don't want to deal with a challenge that lies ahead. These feelings can come at us for many different reasons, but they all have the same end effect. They steal our joy in life and can drain our energy if we don't confront them. But we can find freedom from fear and anxiety, no matter what the cause. Joyce wants us to know that with our faith in Christ, we can overcome these feelings every time. Find out how we can increase our faith and get the victory today. Now, here's Joyce with today's teaching. Well, today I want to talk to you about having the courage to be different. Amen. Amen. Um, You know, there's probably relatively few people that have the courage to be completely and fully themselves throughout their lifetime. But I believe that as children of God, we can learn that as long as we have our trust in Him. Do you know anything at all about living a phony life because you're trying to impress everybody else around you? That's real torment, isn't it? To not be able to be free to be who you are. And you know, the truth is, is we are all different. God made us different on purpose. And so it's really foolish to spend your life trying to be like somebody else. Now, other people can be an example to us, but they should never become our standard. Our standard is Jesus. And if he didn't want us to be different, we wouldn't all have something as simple as different fingerprints. I mean, he's gone to pretty great extreme to say, I didn't create you to be just like somebody else. And it was hard for me to fully step into and embrace this role that God has called me to because I got a lot of rejection when I first stepped out to do this. You know, a a woman ministering is much more acceptable today than it was 40 years ago when I started. And uh, I believe that sometimes God uses people, and I'm sure he wants to use you in a similar way in whatever area you're in, to kind of clear the path for other people that are going to come behind them. And uh, I paid a price to do what I'm doing. Honestly, I don't believe that you can ever do anything that's of very much value if you're not willing to pay a price to do it. And part of the price that we pay is being misunderstood by other people. We always expect people to understand, but they don't. And we have to finally understand that if God has spoken something to your heart, you get it. But if he hasn't spoken that to somebody else about you, they have no ability to understand. And if you're trying to deal as a believer with an unbeliever, then they certainly don't get it. They don't understand anything about our walk with God. And we saw uh, in a previous teaching that Moses fled from Egypt because he had stepped out to do what was in his heart to do, and people judged him and It says that he expected them to understand that he'd been called to help his brethren, but they did not understand. So I just want to be very clear this morning that if you're expecting everybody to understand you, (laughs) I mean, it's just just a myth. It's just not going to happen. And, uh, but I love Hebrews 4 that says that we have a high priest who understands. See, Jesus understands you. So in your own little brand of uniqueness, see, I used to think I was weird, but then I finally realized I'm not weird, I'm unique. And you are unique. And God wants you to be free to be fully and completely yourself. Now, we have some special stuff going on in the world today. And uh, there's a big push from a lot of different places for Christians to be closet Christians or to not be Christians or to shut your mouth or don't stand up. Don't you dare go against the flow. And I believe that we're making a big mistake if we buy into that. I believe that God wants us to be bold and courageous. And let me just say that Sinners are not quiet about what they want. And it's amazing that there's these little small groups 
of people that want to take away our rights and freedoms, and they keep at it and 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 keep at it until they just finally end up getting what they want. And so we need to keep at it and keep at it and keep at it and keep at it and keep at it. Can I just tell you this and be very plain? Believers in Jesus Christ are the only hope that we have today of not losing our Christian rights in this country. I would have never, ever, ever thought 50 years ago that I could live to see what's going on today. I mean, the world has changed so dramatically in 50 years that it is absolutely shocking. And you see, when evil is not confronted, then it just continues to grow and grow and grow. And being silent is the worst thing that we can do. And so we need to learn that we are gonna stand up against what's going on in the world today and refuse to bow down, to bow down. The devil's always wanting us to bow down. The devil said to Jesus, if you'll bow down and worship me just once, And the enemy presses us to compromise with the world so we can get along with them. Come on now, I said he presses us to compromise with the world so we can be accepted and get along with them. That's why it's important for me to talk to you today about realizing that you can survive rejection if you have to. You can survive the rejection of people, but you cannot survive losing your relationship with God by being a coward and giving in to what the world is making demands on us for. God is with us. He's with you. And he's depending on you. And he's depending on me. And this is a time for us to shine, shine, shine. Isaiah 43, one through five. But now in spite of past judgments for Israel's sins, thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have ransomed you by paying a price instead of leaving you a captive. I have called you by your name. You are mine. Wow, I like that. When you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned or scorched, nor will the flame kindle upon you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt to the Babylonians for your ransom. Ethiopia and Seba is, the province of Ethiopia is in exchange for your release. Because you are precious in my sight and honored, and because I love you, I will give men in return for you and people in exchange for your life. Fear not, I am with you. Fear not, I am with you. Now, many times in my walk with God, I've had to turn to those scriptures and remember that when I'm going through, (laughs) that God hasn't left me. Even though I may feel like he has, he hasn't left me. You know, when I first stepped out to follow the call of God on my life, I mean, I went through some very, very, very hard times. I got asked to leave my church, lost most of my friends, and it was a lonely and a hard time for me. And to stand here and say that I had no fear would not be true because back then I didn't understand how to deal with fear like I do today. But I'm so grateful that God gave me the courage and the grace to want to please him more than I wanted to please the people. And as I, you know, as I was studying this morning, I felt like that God told me as a minister, part of my job is to prepare people to face the future. We, we have to be prepared. If, if our leaders don't tell us what may happen and how we need to respond, then they're not doing the right thing. And as a leader in the church, I feel like that I'm not gonna bring a negative message at all. Hey, I hope everything turns out rosy. 
But just in case it doesn't, <laughs> I want us all to be prepared to take a stand for God and be determined that we're not going to compromise with the world and lose what Jesus died to give us. And I have, I have felt very strongly starting last year sometime that I need to keep in front of people more and more and more that Jesus is coming back soon. Amen. And, you know, if you read the New Testament, the apostles talked about this all the time. I mean, they would encourage people, do this because the Lord's coming soon. Don't live a selfish life because the Lord's coming soon. And so... I believe that Jesus is coming soon, and I don't know exactly when that's going to be, but I think we should live every day like it might be tonight. Amen. And so I want to do what I can do to help you be prepared. One of the things that Dave shares about kids going off to college today, you know, I think it's what, like 75% of Christian kids that go to college lose their faith while they're in college. You know why? Because they're not prepared when they go in to know what they're going to deal with. And so we need to prepare our children to tell them your faith is going to be attacked. You're going to be judged. You're going to be criticized. You're going to hear all kinds of scientific things and mental things that if you just go with your head and you don't stick with your heart, you could end up getting confused and throwing away your faith. I believe when we're prepared, I think when we're prepared, then we can handle anything and we can face anything. In Titus chapter 3, verse 1, this is what it says. Remind people to be submissive to their magistrates and authorities, to be obedient, and to be prepared and willing to do any upright and honorable work. Now, how do we get ourselves prepared? By having the right mindset. Colossians 3, 1 says, set your mind and keep it set on things that are above, not on things upon the earth. My husband loves to play golf, and, and he plays a fair amount, and uh, he practices a lot, and <laughs> he plays, and he practices, and he plays, and he practices, and uh, I mean, he just, Dave is just a very active guy, and just sitting around just would not work for him, and so I said to him one day, I said, because I thought, what would Dave ever do if he, you know, if he gets old enough that he can't play, which I don't know that that's ever going to happen to him, but I'm like, how do you think you would handle it? What would you do if you got to the point where you, for some reason or something happens, you couldn't play golf? He said, oh, it won't be a problem. He said, I've already thought about it and I've set my mind. Come on now, this is so valuable what I'm telling you right now. I have set my mind that if I ever couldn't play, I'd be happy anyway. Thanks for listening. Learn how to live a worry and anxiety-free life with today's offer, Joyce's new book, The Answer to Anxiety. This encouraging hardcover book is available now for a gift of any amount in U.S. funds, and we do accept all major credit cards. You can order today's offer from our website at joycemeyer.org or call us toll-free at 1-800-789-789. 0089. Again, the number is 1 800 789 0089. Get your daily dose of encouragement with the Joyce Meyer Ministries app. Catch up on seven days of enjoying everyday life episodes. Grow deeper in God's Word with the daily devotional and question of the day. And enjoy all your favorite teachings from Joyce in your digital library. Find all this and more with the Joyce Meyer Ministries app. Search Joyce Meyer in your app store and download it today. Thanks again for listening to Enjoying Everyday Life. Our mission here at Joyce Meyer Ministries is simple, sharing Christ and loving people. Remember, together we can do more.